Hi everyone, welcome to the session. I'm sure you are all interested in generative AI, right? That's, that's the thing that is going on and you want it to be secure, right? That's the whole point of reinforce. So my name is Abhinav Zavdekar and uh, I am a solutions architect, part of the Amazon Q business service team. And I'm going to talk about how you can use uh, Amazon Q securely using IAM and Identity Center. So I will do a very quick overview of Amazon Q and then Amazon Q business. Then I'm going to go into a little bit of details of uh, how the architecture looks like, how do you connect it to IAM Identity Center. And then I'm also going to show a sh short demo. Considering the short time that we have, I don't think there will be time left for question and answers. But uh, I will hang around for some time in the hallway after the talk. So feel free to stop by and ask any questions. Or we also have a booth at the expo downstairs. And uh, you, can, uh, 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 you can stop by over there. So either me or my colleagues will be there. So uh, when it comes to generative AI, in enterprises, there are a bunch of challenges. So first thing is that the large language models which are necessary for generative AI are trained on data that is not enterprise data. Enterprises are interested in the data that they have, right, and the content that they have. So uh, the large language models don't have that. So there has to be some way to get hold of that enterprise data. And then, all the rest are security concerns. In fact, you guys know them more than I do, right? You are security experts. So the applications have to be secure in the sense that users should be seeing only what they are authorized to see. Generative AI is necessarily conversational. Conversations need to be private. And of course, there are compliance restrictions. So that's why Amazon came up with Amazon Q. Okay, so Amazon Q is your generative AI assistant for your enterprise. And it works with your code or it works with your content. Amazon Q has different flavors. There are two sort of uh, new services or full services for Amazon Q. So one is Amazon Q developer, and uh, you work with Amazon Q developer uh, for any typical engineering development related tasks. You want to develop code, or uh, you uh, uh, want to know more about certain services and so on. That is where you use Amazon Q developer. Whereas Amazon Q business is for uh, uh, your employee, uh, employees to work with uh, uh, for their employee productivity using your enterprise content. And for the rest of the talk, I am really going to focus on Amazon Q business. And we also have Amazon Q on top of existing services like uh, QuickSight and Connect and so on and so forth. So this is basically Q interface added, generative AI interface added on top of our existing services. Let's look at where Amazon Q fits in the layers of the generative AI stack, right? So at the bottom most tier or layer of this stack at AWS, you have uh, mechanisms for customers to train their own models or uh, draw inferencing from their own models, right? So that's why you have all kinds of instances or SageMaker and so on. So these are the mecha uh, mechanisms or tools you can use to train your own models. Then there is next set of customers. They don't want to train their own models, but what they want to do is that there are a bunch of large language models out there, such as uh, 
uh, by Anthropic and Cohere and AI21 and uh, many other uh, partners of AWS. And all of these models are hosted on Bedrock securely, Amazon Bedrock securely. So you can build your own generative AI applications using these large language models on uh, Amazon Bedrock. Then there is the third tier where we have customers who want a fully managed application, fully managed service. They don't want to build their own generative AI applications from different components. So here is where Amazon Q fits in. So it's a fully managed service. Uh, customers don't need to worry about, you know, uh, which LLM to choose, and they don't need to worry about prompt engineering and guardrails and all of those things. So that's where we come into picture. So all the queues sit in that tier. So let's uh, talk a little bit about what is Amazon Q business. So Amazon Q business is basically an employee productivity generative AI assistant. So what you can do is that wherever your uh, uh, enterprise content sits, whether it is in Confluence or SharePoint or uh, Google Drive, wherever it may be, Office 365, Amazon Q Business has connectors, more than 40 built-in connectors to all of these different data sources that can securely uh, ingest or index your content from all of these data sources along with the access control lists. And then uh, your employees, authorized and authenticated employees can uh, use that to get answers to their questions or generate new content also do tasks like, for example, you can directly do tasks such as creating, let's say, a ticket, right? So that's all what uh, is uh, uh, done. That's all the, uh, uh, some of the features of Amazon Q Business. Amazon Q Business also lets administrators set things like they, it provides guardrails and admin controls and administrators can choose how to, uh, some of those guardrails. So let's get a little deeper into the architecture of uh, how Amazon Q looks like and how you can secure it, right, using Identity Center. So as I said, on the left-hand side, we, uh, these are just representative data sources. And Amazon Q Business has these data source connectors. What they do is that they connect with all of your different data sources and they uh, crawl these data sources and they ingest documents. So when they ingest documents, they are actually uh, downloading the documents, extracting text, doing chunking, all of that, then vectorization and so on and so forth. All of those uh, uh, things that I'm sure you are all uh, uh, familiar with. But additionally, it also ingests all the access control lists from your data sources. So if you have your access control lists properly configured in your enterprise applications, then all of those access control lists and any local groups as well that may be defined in your uh, uh, data sources, all of those are also indexed and they are kept in the index over here, right? And then on the right-hand side, let's look at it. So we know what is there in the index. So let's see when a user wants to query, how does that work? So your users are authenticated using some identity provider. Most enterprises will have some identity provider, maybe like Okta, uh, Entri-AD, or whatever you use, so something like that. You have your identity provider. Your identity provider can be synchronized using SEIM with IAM Identity Center, okay? So AWS IAM Identity Center is the service where you can synchronize all your identities and that is what Amazon Q uses as the source of truth for your identity information, okay? Now, very important to note that you don't need to, you do need IAM and Identity Center for the approach that I'm showing over here, but you don't really require uh, a, uh, uh, it to be using permission sets and account access and so on. You, all you need to do is that you need to configure the SCIM and sync your identities. And on the right-hand side, a user is authentic, an authenticated user 
uh, accesses when they access whether using uh, uh, the web experience or the web app or API or any of our gateways like Slack gateway which sits on your Slack, the uh, user is known to Amazon Q Business and it will retrieve only that, that data from its index to which that user has access, okay? And then use that data as context with the LLM to respond to your questions, right? To the user's questions. So user will get responses only from that content which they are authorized to access. All right, with that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly show a demo of uh, uh, Amazon Q Business. So I will quick, quickly share the use case that we have here. So this is an enterprise, and two new employees have joined the company. So one is called Mary, and the other one is called Mitio. They have just finished the uh, employee orientation. And during the employee orientation, they have been told, hey, if you need assistant with your uh, onboarding tasks or benefits or any such questions that you may have, ask them to queue business, okay? So this is the assistant. So what happens, let's quickly see what we have here. So Mary goes and asks a question, what is the checklist of new team member onboarding activities? And she gets a checklist and she is assigned to this project called ACME project, Acme project. And then what uh, she does is that she can also click on the sources and when she clicks on the sources, she actually goes to the Confluence page. Now, on the right hand side, Meteo is asking the same question. Note that uh, Meteo's project name is different because they have different access to different projects, right? Mary has access to Acme project, Meteo has access to any, any org app project. And so uh, even in the next question, that's what is going on. I'm going to go a little fast here because uh, I'm running out of time. But uh, uh, again, Meteo is seeing the other project. Now they ask one more question, who are the team members and they see their respective project team members, okay? Now, here is where the interesting part comes in, okay, is uh, here Mary is asking a question, okay, what's the eligibility for health benefits coverage? And she gets an answer. And then Meteo is asking the same question. And you will realize that they are really, they have access to the same pages. So, so far, so good. But now see what happens. Mary is asking a question, very personal and private question. I'm getting married later this year, okay? Is this a permitting event so that she can change benefits, right? This is a per, uh, private and personal question and she wants to make sure that this is not shared. This is a private question, okay? So very important to note that this conversation can only be accessed by the authenticated and authorized user. Generative AI is necessarily conversational. So you have to remember the conversation history and how long you remember and so on. You can have all kinds of uh, uh, policies, but for some time at least you have to actually store the conversation and you have to work with the conversation, right? And so Mary, it's only Mary who can see this conversation. Nobody else can see this conversation. And even though we saw that the health care benefits related uh, confluence pages are really visible to all employees. It's not just to Mary or it's not just to Meteo. Both of them can see it, but their conversations are very private. And your employees, as well as you as, a, as an organization, needs to have this confidence that your generative AI solution, first, not only does it care about the access controls, but the second thing is that even when they are accessing documents that are Public, uh, internally public to all the employees within your organization. The conversations are really private within, uh, and only those employees that have access to those conversations can really access them, right? Let's see what happens here. Let's go see what Matthew asks. Matthew also asks a very private question here. So Matthew says, hey, I have a child with special needs and requires frequent hospital stays. 
and can I get, what kind of leave policies do we have, right? Again, a very, very personal, very private question that Matteo is asking. So employees, if, if you want to employ, uh, if you want to deploy uh, generative AI solutions within your organizations, you really need that not only security for access control, but you also need that type of privacy. Otherwise, it is very difficult to make a generative AI application successful within your organization. And then they can again go and look at the sources, read up more about what kind of you know, uh, policies are there and so on and so forth. So that's really about the demo. So let me switch back to uh, this, means we do have customers like uh, Smartsheet. I see someone from Smartsheet here, so hey. So we, uh, uh, Smartsheet is a referenceable customer. They have already uh, uh, deployed uh, Amazon Q Business in production. And in fact, uh, they also did a joint session with, uh, 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 with AWS when we launched Amazon Q Business in production uh, for, uh, in general availability uh, late last month. And uh, we already went through the demos. Enjoy the rest of the conference.